This video we will talk about FortiGate SD WAN. Uh, it's got a pretty straightforward setup. I will draw this topology that I have where we have a FortiGate and it's connected to two WAN interfaces. Port 2 and port 3. Port 1 is getting used for web access or management. I have then put port 2 and port 3 in, or its type is van. On this end, I have connected WIOS 1 and this end, WIOS 2. This guy is on 10 0, 0. segment he is dot one this interface is dot ten this guy is on ten two two He is dot two, and this guy is dot ten. And on this guy on port four, I've got Wios three, and he's on segment ten one one. Dot ten and dot one three. And I have a loopback with address 123. So this VIOS is trying to reach 123. And so when he goes through this firewall, or this SDN device, which is default, a firewall config, 40 gate. You would have to configure routing, either static or OSPF. In my case, I did OSPF. So I did OSPF between V1, V2, and FortiGate, and a default route from here. From V3 to default, uh, FortiGate. After you do that, and you define your interface types to be VAN on this side and LAN on this side, This guy is LAN. Now you get into the SD WAN setup where you define the performance. SLA. For me, it was low latency or latency. And I'm going to do network emulation. On the V1 and V2 to introduce latency.
So I'm going to introduce latency here and then here, take it off from one side, put it in on the other side, and then you'll see that it's going to switch from going like this. When I introduce latency here, it's going to switch to this one. When I introduce latency here and take it off from here, it'll switch back here. So that's basically how the SD-WAN works. You can have different metrics to monitor. I'm just using ping and latency. So I'm generating pings to this address from 40 gig and then monitoring the latency. Whichever is the lowest, the 40 gig will switch that even though it's getting the OSPF route for 123 and it's installing OSPF for 123, two routes, but it's choosing the one which is lower in latency. So that's the setup. Uh, let's go and take a look at, so this is basic setup. I'm not gonna go through the VOS1 and VOS2 OSPF. It's just basic setup. So 40 gate, I'll go through that. Here's our 40 gate console. If you look at the get router info routing table all, you'll see that the OSP of 123 is coming as multipath, two routes there. And uh, it doesn't show which one it's preferring. It just gives you the routing port. So, you, you know, here's the two routes, OSPF. It's learning from VOS1 and VOS2. VOS1 and VOS2. Let's go to the web interface. And then you'll see first thing that you're going to configure once you get into the web interface is your host and everything which it prompted you then you're going to configure the interfaces to this first interface i'm using it for web interface that's how i'm logging into it so it's on vmware it's going to be this one First interface is VMNet1 host only, and it'll give you an IP address by default. For me, it was 132, 71, 132, whichever you get, you log into it. Once you have your login, you will go configure your port 2 and port 3. <clears throat> And the way to look at which IP you got, you would go here and you would do show interface, show system interface, just do a question mark. And then it'll give you the IPs of all the interfaces. And you can see right here, port one, DHCP by default, it'll give you the IPs. And once you get that IP, you log in. Default admin is not no password, but then it's going to ask you to set it up. But that will be happening on the CLI first. Once you set that password, you'll use that password for admin to log into the web interface. Port one is for management. Port two is my van interface. You'll go configure it, type role as van, IP address, and then I enable pings. Same thing with port three, put the IP address, enable ping. Port four is my LAN, LAN interface connecting to V4, and that's the IP on it, All right? Once your interfaces are done, you're pretty much done on the interface side. You'll go on the OSPF, if you're doing OSPF, create OSPF areas. I've got OSPF zero towards V1, V2, and OSPF area three, towards V4 and you put those areas, those networks in the areas. It's pretty straightforward stuff here. And once you get the OSPF up and running, you can actually see OSPF neighbors right here. You can you know, look at the routing information as well. See the routes coming in. 
neighbors, and then static and dynamic. You can see the routes, 123 coming from two ports, OSPF. That's easy stuff. Once you are done with that, you go to the SD WAN part before you go to the SD WAN part. I apologize. You go to the policy and objects, firewall policies, just to make sure that your traffic is flowing through from V4 all the way to V1 and V2. You'll create this policy. I call it firewall one. What are you gonna say is you're gonna say firewall one incoming is port four, outgoing is SD WAN pop, you know, interface, which is the zone. You'll put it put create a zone before that. If you haven't, then you have to manually put two and three in it. And then we would accept disable the NAT and all the services and then OK and that's going to enable your packet flow through this firewall. Incoming interface, outgoing interface. So SDVAN will ask you to create an SDVAN member. You will create I created an SD-WAN zone one, which has two ports. You add two ports to it. And once you've done, you can select that SD-WAN zone one into your firewall or manually add these. But once you're done with this member, zone member ports, you go to the SD-WAN rule And before SDVAN rule, I created this SDVAN rule. Initially, when I did it, it let me sub create a performance SLA object, but my second try, it did not actually. So you go create your performance SLA like here. What I did is I edited the existing one. So I took the default AWS, put 123, just I changed the destination address from aws.com to 123.111, changed the HTTP to ping, added the ports, participating ports, and then changed the latency threshold to 50. And that's about it. And then when you go to the rule, you create the rule, I created this first rule called A, And all sources, any protocol number, low latency by default, I think it's best quality, low latency, SLA, added the ports, added the required target, SLA. And once you're done with that, it's gonna show you what's happening on each port. You're pretty much done. And then basically what you're gonna see is V4 is going through to V1 right now, which is port two. So he's going through port two, which is V1. Now we're gonna introduce latency on this one, V1. Set interface Ethernet E0 traffic policy out to latency. And the way you set it is show traffic policy. Network emulator. Set traffic policy, network emulator, whatever the name is, ABC. In my case, it's latency. And I chose network delay. Two hundred. Okay, so I'm gonna just change that to three hundred. Commit, and you will see that this guy is gonna switch to. And I'm gonna put this on an interface. Set interface. Ethernet zero, which is where it's connected to the firewall or the forty gate. 
traffic policy out latency. So once I do this, keep your eyes on this guy. It's right now the latency is 1.25. It's going towards V1. Commit. There you go, 302. The SD van is already configured, so it should switch to the other one. There you go. Took a while, but it did switch from 300 to one. Now let's, so now it's going to this guy. See, we lost two before it was going to be lost one. So look at the latency, it's at one milliseconds. I'm gonna go delete the latency from here. and increase the latency here. There you go. Went up and switched. So now it's going to be one. There you go. So this is <clears throat> Pretty cool. I think uh, you know even VOS lets you do this through a CLI. And the uh, only difference between VOS's capability and the FortiGate is that it gives you a pretty GUI stuff. And I'll show you the the performance SLAs of what ports are doing and what's the latency and what's happening. All that good stuff. It by default is a firewall, uh, and so it's you know it's a good. Uh, simple way of implementing your sd1 capabilities with a one 40 gate machine whether it's virtual or physical but then obviously you're going to have to if you want to secure it over internet you're going to encrypt it uh, or, or from an overlay perspective and it doesn't require any controllers or anything it's just simple one branch router implementation of 40 gig. Hope this helps.